Welcome to the D-List, the show where I list things and my name begins with a D. And welcome back to the D-List's favorite Decemberween tradition, talking about Homestar. It's been a couple years, but we're back. So what's left on the site to rank? Um, I don't know, Teen Girl Squad? Number 16, Issue 1. Okay, since most of the Teen Girl Squad issues don't have names beyond their issue number, this ranking system might get a little bit confusing. But hey, it's not Homestar if it's not a little bit confusing. Brittany sends Strong Bad an email asking to make a comic about her friends. And perhaps fueled by resentment towards her misspelling of appreciate, or maybe just fueled by his own vaguely adolescent boy rage, Strong Bad makes a comic where he kills off her friends. There's some early installment weirdness here, as I'm not sure if the Brothers Chaps knew this would spin off into its own sub-universe with its own mythology at the time, so it's kind of jarring to look back and hear so-and-so have a real person's name, even if Strong Bad immediately forgets that name. And while this isn't the only installment to show the aftermath of the girls' deaths, it doesn't happen that often in subsequent issues. But this did set the tone for the series and give us one of the most quoted words on the entire site. So I do like this first installment now, but it did take a little while for this sub-series' true potential to shine through. Number 15. Issue number 3. The girls go for summer fashions at the mall and thrift store. The series was still finding its footing at this point, and these early ones are kind of throwaway, but they each have at least one super memorable moment. In this case, the two lines I quote the most are What's-Her-Face's last two lines. I met a possum. Good for you. Now let's attract some cute boys. Ready? Pose! My blood hurts. Teen Girl Squad! The teenage girls between the ages of 13 and 19. Number 14. Issue number 2. The girls get started with some fashion hot tips, but get distracted by a boy who dates so-and-so, while cheerleader and ugly one get jealous, and Thomas hits what's-her-face with the bat. Or what's-her-face gets hurt, depending on whether you go off what Strong Bad writes or what Strong Bad says. This issue already started breaking traditions by not killing off any of the teen girls, and this time the one to escape without any injury is so-and-so. Number 13. Issue number 6. For Decemberween in July, the girls do a gift exchange in a lion's mouth. What's-her-face is... hesitant. But the judges are very generous. On its own, this one's not bad, but it was originally experienced as part of a Decemberween in July package, where it was a much-appreciated stocking stuffer, but it was kind of overshadowed by the Sweet Cup and Cakes holiday special. It's a miracle. Number 12. Four Gregs. There's some debate as to whether or not to count this as a legitimate TGS issue, but my list, my rules, I say it counts. The nerdiest boys at school go to the football game, where the football players will be powerless to ridicule or wedgie them. But of course, things still go wrong. If there's any concerns that TGS is a genuine mockery of adolescent girl culture and not a satire of adolescent boys' perceptions of and reactions to adolescent girl culture, it's refreshing to see the brothers' chaps take aim at what I imagine was a lot closer to their own culture in high school. This broadens our view of the school as we get to see the Growlbacks game from a different perspective than the girls, and ends with one of those chaotically meta clusters that the brothers' chaps do best. It's over? Number 11. Issue number 15. Everyone's getting ready for the pretty prism. Cheerleader has a non-Greg date. The arrowed guy actually talks to What's-Her-Face before sparrowing her. A cardboard cutout of Tenerent's love entertains everyone. A sheep lies about how bad it is to be gutted by Manolios. And for the second numbered issue in a row, the ugly one has a good time. And that's the last TGS thus far. Ten years ago. Wow. I know new Homestar content isn't released with quite the frequency it used to be, but... I do hope we get to root for the Growlbacks again before too long. Number 10. Issue number 12. What time is it? It's Valentine's, hence the special red ink. Cheerleader moves her way up the Valentine's social ladder, while What's-Her-Face and Ugly One struggle with finding boys, and so-and-so gets upset about mispronunciations. Man, this reminds me of how little I miss the complex politics of Valentine's Day in high school. What truly sets this one apart is What's-Her-Face getting a happy ending with the wireless wizard. It's actually kind of sweet in that weird strong baddie in way. Number 9. 
Issue number 14. It's the last day of school, and everybody wants to see their yearbook picture, except for so-and-so, who has to form the head for her Scantron armor. The coach is nervous as ever, what's-her-face cleans out her locker, and the ugly one gets pranked until Quarterman gives her a John Hughes ending. Ugly one, all this time, I was looking around, and you weren't right there in front of me. But I realized, when I was looking around, that you were right there in front of me, all this time. Ugly one. That makes so much sense! Despite Strongbat's pent-up aggression, he occasionally seems to have a fondness for his creations, and I like how he ends up giving each of the squad at least one happy ending. Number 8. Issue number 9. Cheerleader makes friends with a girl with a learner's permit, but it doesn't end well for her. And now that she was finally the first one to die, the rest of the girls can do what they really want, but it doesn't go well for them. But at least Strongbag gets to sing. BFF carved in a tree that stands for powerful. And we actually see the girl's afterlife for once. This issue not only gives us Mr. Pitters, whose voice and design are somehow both wildly off-putting and oddly endearing, but it also introduces the Gregs to TGS as Strongbad's comic book world is fleshed out just a little more each day. Number 7. Issue number 11. The girls go to summer camp, but for once it's not What's-Her-Face that gets left behind, it's so-and-so, as she has to wear Mark's name tag at shirt folding store and sell gifts for cough anniversaries. This episode not only gave us countless quotables, <laughs> and it's a double play! Yeah! That's not my wife. And... Okay. But it gave us a catchy campfire tune. And you can't be one be better, can't be tumbling down! Did he sell beans? Lord, no! Did he sell eggs? Lord, no! But he couldn't, and he wouldn't, and he shouldn't, so he stapled it down! And it got so-and-so started on her life of crime. Number 6. Issue number 7. It's Teeny Tiny Girl Squad, as the younger versions of the girls are in daycare. This issue starts to expand the mythology of the TGS universe, a mythology strong that is making up as he goes, and he can't even always decide what to make up. It shows the girl's past, when Cheerleader wasn't always the top dog of the group, and introduces Tompkins, the first character who seems to be even lower on the social ladder than the girls. And it kinda crosses over with the Cheat Commandos verse, because all the Homestar sub-universes intertwine eventually. Number 5. Issue number 8. The girls enter the Battle of the Bands, and they prep by quoting Spinal Tap. They practice at Judith so and so sons house, and things get weird. Strong Bass' typical violent streak comes into play here, as for the first time, every one of the girls is killed. Everybody dies at me! Ah, oh. oh, crap. Strong Bad might have issues with women. Then again, I guess he only knows one woman. But not only is Strong Bad extra violent in this one, he's also extra weird. There was always a surreal streak in TGS, but this one tested the waters for just how surreal things could get. And yet at the same time, it still has the website's single most grounded and relatable portrayal of a mundane yet familiar part of the school experience. And lunch today will be a bread tangle of pizza. Pizza belongs in a triangle! Number 4. Issue number 5. The rest of the girls go on spring break, leaving What's-Her-Face to hang out with the less aggressive Thomas. Cheerleader tries to make a play for older boys while so-and-so goes tandem parasailing. Even in postcard form, birds just can't catch a break in TGS. The name of the boat still makes me giggle, and this episode gave us one of Homestar Runner's earwormiest earworms, and you know what a high bar that is to clear. I miss video games. I miss my mom. I miss video games. I, I, I miss my mom. I miss video games. I miss my mom. I miss video games. I, I, I miss my mom. Number 3. Issue number 13. So and so is babysitting Tompkins, whose doorbell quotes the fat video, and the other girls crash the party. Cheerleader tries to invite some boys over, What's-Her-Face is stunned by two pantries, Ugly One summons PCP, and So-and-So's Life of Crime from issue number 11 catches up to her. This issue is full of some of the best little dashes of surrealism, and Momkin's instructions for the babysitter are part of my regular lexicon. 
And as much as HR Wiki refuses to admit it, I'm convinced that this line read, You're not my real father! is based on this line read. You know what my kids would say? You're not my real father! I mean, Servo lives in Free Country, USA. Strong Bad's gonna be influenced by him. Number 2. Tenth Annual Anniversary. It's the tenth issue in full color and with a bit of 3D. It's the ugly one's birthday and the guest list includes everybody. Everybody. And while everyone else meets their usual fate, Ugly One's birthday makeover is so effective that even Strong Bad gets caught up in the action. With its visual gimmicks and its breaking of the format, this was more ambitious than any previous TGS issue. Maybe not quite as ambitious as Virus, but it was certainly the closest equivalent TGS had at the time. And it had the funniest, most perfectly timed cutaways of any TGS at the time. Corn is no place for a mighty warrior. The coach just called and said the Olympics are dumb. We'll be there like shareware. I don't know what they're talking about, I swear! This honestly could have been a series finale for TGS, but I'm glad they kept it going for at least a little while longer. And my number one favorite teen girl squad, issue number four. School is happening again, and so-and-so gets to sit next to Brett Brederson. Cheerleader tries to date the quarterback, and What's-Her-Face and the Ugly One aren't cool. I'm gonna be honest, when the first three teen girl squads originally came out, they didn't do that much for me. So I just wrote it off as being not my favorite Homestar segment. But then this issue came out, and it was the first time I laughed out loud at a teen girl squad. While the first three issues all had one or two quotable lines each, this one was nothing but wall-to-wall -wall quotability. When you fall in a bottomless pit, you die of starvation. Y'all are so whack. Wiggity whack? Nope, just regular type. Good. I mean, good. And great. Great and good! And after this one, I finally got it. Something clicked for me and I was able to appreciate the comedic rhythm and voice of not only all subsequent Teen Girl Squads, but also the three previous ones. So I will always have a special place in my heart for this issue. Because this issue made me a fan of this subseries of the website where I was already a fan of everything else on the site. And there's my ranking of the Teen Girl Squads. Thus far, I'm still holding out hope that there will be more of them someday. But until that day comes, which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, it's over!